Assalamu alaikum my brothers and sisters. I hope you're praying your salahs as well as looking to the Quran and Hadith for guidance in your everyday life. If you're watching this video and it's salah time, please pause it and go pray and come back when you're done. Please use the link in the description to donate to the people in Palestine. The charity I've teamed up with has a 100% donation policy. Please also check out the description section of this video to support the channel. Piers Morgan has had many guests that have been both pro-Palestine and pro-Israel. We're going to concentrate on the Zionist women he's had on, in particular journalist Emily Austin, lawyer Brooke Goldstein and the Israeli ambassador Zipi Hotovli. All three of these women have an obvious bias towards Israel, so much so that they just shrug off the fact that over 10,000 people have been eliminated in Palestine in a month, with nearly half of that number being children. They seem to see this as justified and as collateral damage, which I think is the definition of evil. No matter who you are, what colour you are, what religion you belong to, if your people are wiping out innocent civilians in mass, you should be calling for this to end. Credit to the Jewish people who have marched with Muslims and others in opposition to the genocide taking place in Palestine, which these Zionist women deny. Let's look at a short clip of this journalist Emily and dismantle it. Do you support Palestinian liberation from the from siege Hamas. and blockade There's and the no occupation? That's factually the incorrect. How can I talk no, to somebody no who doesn't even blockade. accept basic United facts? If one country, in this case Israel, is able to turn on and off the tap of water and power so and food for the people of Gaza, that is not a healthy situation. You can call it what you like, you can mm -hmm. call it occupation, you can call it repression, you can call it control, but that surely when they talk about freedom for Palestine, what they mean is we're not reliant on Israel giving us water, food and energy so we can actually exist. Correct, and I'm happy you brought up that point because they want their own territory, they want their own government, governmental body. So when we pulled out in 2005, 2006, why couldn't they establish that for themselves? Why are we giving electricity and water to begin with? And my question is, where is the hundreds of millions of dollars of aid being sent directly to Palestine, directly to Gaza? Where is that money going? I'm devastated that 7,000 Palestinians are murdered. I'm beyond 40 sad. 40% I'm of devastated, Hamas and I'm devastated that I paid taxes Palestine. to the government that is doing that. You can you leave. You like can go back to Gaza. Firstly, this Emily works as a mainstream media journalist, so immediately she has no credibility and is untrustworthy as that is a prerequisite for most people who work in that field. She said at the end of the clip, you can leave, go back to Gaza. This is a common discrimination tactic used against Muslims and other minorities. It's like someone telling her to go back to Israel or Germany because she's Jewish. The entitlement this bratty woman has is absolutely insane. She asked about where all the aid getting sent to Palestine is going, implying that those in political power over there are stealing it. This is similar to how hundreds of millions of dollars from American taxpayers are given to Israel. Where does all that money go? It goes into the pockets of the politicians who have shares in defence companies that produce weapons to wage war on innocent civilians in Palestine. We could speak about political corruption on either side all day. But the fact is there is a massive loss of life of innocent people currently taking place, the vast majority of whom are Palestinian. This Emily lady is so venomous and dishonest that she overlooks this fact. She did denies Israel's illegal occupation of Palestine and she admits no fault on the part of Israel at all. She also fails to acknowledge the scale of the loss of life of children and repeats the slogan free Palestine from Hamas in order to justify Israel's actions, when the reality right now is that Palestinian civilians need to be freed from the avalanche of violence coming from Israel. Let's roll the next clip. I want to read you what you tweeted me recently. You said, Piers, I've been on the show I know you to be a fair journalist, but I don't understand why you're giving these Islamo-Nazis such a large platform over and over again to spread their venom. There comes a point when you have heard their message and you've done your duty. Would you likewise host every single member of the SS in Nazi Germany for the sake of debunking? I hate to say you're not doing a good job at it. Their lies and propaganda are so carefully crafted that the more you put Hamas apologies on, the more effective they become. At what point does your journalism become a propaganda tool for terrorism? They send their best and brightest to you to engage in mental masturbation, acrobatics, and they're running circles around you. With all due respect, enough. In the battle between good and evil, there is no journalistic obligation to continue to put evil on a platform to be debated. What you seem to be saying is that so long as I have pro-Israeli voices, that's fine. As long as I have a lot of people like you who just have one view of this, then I'm a fair journalist. But the moment I stray into people who are pro-Palestinian in a very passionate manner, then somehow I'm uh, failing 
in my journalistic duty. And I would say that that right there is part of the problem, Brooke, because I have tried to turn this show into a genuinely fair platform for all sides, all arguments, all voices. You've been having pro-Hamas people on your platform and you're giving them an opportunity to spew their virulent anti-Semitism and their propaganda that justifies Hamas terrorism. It's one thing to can debate issues one, of geopolitics you, and national... Brooke, Brooke, can you name right one? In, right in front of me, I can't. I was replying to something that uh, well, just name you one. had someone on that I was Name replying. one guest I've had in a month. You know, I don't have who the actually names has expressed on me right now. The Oh, Brooke, on, Brooke, right. with all respect, you tweeted yeah. this lengthy yeah. attack on me and my journalistic okay, rigour. So, so and I fairness, will talk about and it. I'm simply Let's asking talk you about, if you're going to do the, the Brooke, people Brooke, you have on right hang now. Hang on, Brooke. Hang on. If you're going to do that, I don't think it's unreasonable for you to say who, which of my pro Palestinian guests so, expressed support for Hamas? Because I must have missed okay. that. So, this Brooke woman is supposed to be a human rights attorney. I guess the human rights of Palestinians don't matter to her when Israel is switching off the electricity of a country that is not theirs, resulting in newborn babies in incubators and patients in ICU losing their lives instantaneously. From what she tweeted, it seems she is extremely uncomfortable with Muslims who are pro Palestinian. So much so, she uses false labels such as pro Hamas, which even Piers Morgan himself said is not true. She hates that his Muslim guests are able to articulate themselves so well and communicate that the slaughter of Palestinians is a war crime. This lady is devious and full of deception. She generalises Muslims like all Zionists do in order to label all Palestinians as Hamas, even calling this a battle between good and evil. Brooke, the good don't slaughter over 4,000 innocent children and over 10,000 people in total so far in 30 days with no end in sight. Zionist supremacists like this Brooke fear brilliant Muslim minds because it exposes their wrongdoing and injustice and doesn't allow them to control the narrative and that's why she couldn't name one pro Hamas person that Piers Morgan allowed on his show like how she accused him of doing in her tweet when he questioned her on it. Let's roll the last clip. We need to protect our children. We are out there in Gaza not in order to revenge, not in order to punish. I don't agree with any of those I mean, definitions. It is, part, it is partly that though. Let me just it? say why we're doing that. Mm. We're doing that to make sure that my children, my friend's children, mm and every child in Israel will be protected. In Gaza, a lot of innocent people on the Palestinian side are going to die as well. How many is too many? And I don't have the number. I just talk about this debate about proportionality. I'm struggling to see what is proportionate. So the civilian death toll is going to be very high. And the question for the international community is, at what point does the high moral ground, which I think Israel has at the moment, at what point could you risk losing that? So, first of all, Israel is a moral country, works according to the international law. But I also heard you this morning saying there's no humanitarian crisis here. By any definition of a humanitarian let crisis... Let me explain that. That okay. is happening. I mean, you may apportion blame to Hamas on your side. Let, let, let me explain I don't think statement. you can deny there's a humanitarian crisis. Let me explain that. The reason I said that, because at the moment, in Gaza, you have supplies of water, you have supplies of food, and unfortunately, the water wait is, a second, is, some of it being Some abused. say the water has run out. Going back to your own history, when you fight Nazi Germany, mm. you knew that there were many, many civilians got attacked from your attacks on German mm. cities. Altogether, it was over 600,000 civilian Germans that got killed. And was it worth it in order to defeat Nazi Germany? And the answer was yes. But it is also true that nearly three times as many Palestinians have died in the last week than were killed in the outrage on October the 7th. And then that number is going to go much, so much higher. You cannot have peace, you cannot have any type of negotiation. This woman is a filthy, deceitful politician. She speaks about safeguarding her children and the children in Israel, but has no problem with the children in Palestine losing their lives. She denies there is a humanitarian crisis going on in Palestine as a result of the continuous and monumental attack on them by Israel. And then she goes on to condone 600,000 innocent German civilians losing their lives in World War II to justify what the Israeli forces are currently doing to Palestinian civilians. She then outright lies and says Israel does everything in accordance with international law, which is false, as building illegal settlements in Palestine over decades is directly in breach of international law. This ambassador of evil even had the gall to say there will be no peace talks or negotiation, revealing the real agenda behind what Israel's true motive is. The constant propaganda from these Zionists is shameless. It is our responsibility to keep putting out the correct information and stand against innocent people and innocent children being exterminated as if they are subhuman. Let's pray 
pray for our brothers and sisters over there and donate what we can. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and turn on notifications as I'll be posting new content daily. Jazakallah khair. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah.